to Gaw TV. Oh yes, that's a hashtag. It's Wednesday night. It's our favorite night of the week. All my ladies are here. Two of us looking pretty in pink and Mickey James rocking that headband, girl. I got this little and my t-shirt, which I told you, uh, I will have another story about this too. We'll have another, I'll tell you about that later. Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) We're so happy to have you guys here, but before we begin, please do us a favor and yourselves a favor. Please like this video. Give us that thumbs up, please. Make sure that you subscribe to our show right there. And of course, click that bell icon. Ring a ding ding. I need a bell to do that actually. I should buy oh, one. Oh, you do. That would be really cute. I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get one. Okay. Uh, click that bell <laughs> icon to enable notifications so you never miss a future episode. Guys, this is gonna be an exciting episode because we have a very special guest. Lisa, wow. shall we get right into it? I'm very excited. We shoot. Well, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Okay, here I am in Studio City. Um, I'm going to be um, introducing a great friend of ours. You guys know him very well. Um, here, I'm in here, drove all the way to Studio City because he's kind of a big deal, you guys. Oh, yeah. A Canadian. Um, he's a professional bass fisherman. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. He gets he, all the bass. He gets all the bass. All that bass. <laughs> all about that bass. About that bass. <laughs> um, he's, a, he's also a YouTuber. And uh, he has worked in AEW as a interviewer, and he, he interviews a lot of our old friends and new friends in wrestling and stuff like that. Um, but I'm gonna have him plug in all the stuff he has done. Oh yeah, 2011 Cosmopolitan Magazine's Bachelor of the Year. Oh, shut your face! Oh, hey. shut your face! <laughs> oh, look at him! So here we go, Chris Van Vliet. Monster! Yeah. Look, I wow. got him to wear my 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 other PJ. This, I can't believe I'm on with you guys. This is amazing. Oh my god! This is so. We've been so excited for this. Thanks, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great. I feel like Gosh should stand for gorgeous ass women. Come on. Oh, what? This yeah. is why he's Cosmopolitan's Man of the Year. You look very That's cozy, it. Chris, tonight. A little sweaty, right? Schwitzy, little. This is. I can't believe this is amazing. Wow. This is so comfy, right? I should be wearing onesies as well. Yes. We've done yeah, that well, one time and we were, weren't we like so hot, Mickey, in those cat outfits? Yeah, yeah. But then I will say though, when it's gotten the really cold nights, I'm not gonna lie, I've absolutely worn that same cat outfit because I thought I want to take Pixie for a walk because it's so cozy in there. I it's wore mine so- last night and the night before to go to sleep. <laughs> I, I, did, I did. The sleep in, I don't know about the sleep in. It's hot to sleep in. Yeah. I'm just picturing yeah. you walking around your neighborhood in that cat onesie, like at night with the ears. Hysterical. That's yeah, I walking I with about. her sweater on, and she's like this, being super aggro at everybody so at seven cute. pounds of Satan. So cute. <laughs> we have so much to talk to you about, Chris, but we want to get to our favorite part of the show, which is uh, we, it's, we ask you who you're wearing, what are you drinking? Let's go with our guest of honor first. Give us the rundown. Wow, I, I mean, I'm just kind of wearing and drinking the same thing that our lovely friend Lisa is here. Oh, yes. This is and a monster. Cheers. Yes, we're cheers. drinking fresh cheers. fine wine, Cabernet. And cheers to you. Cheers, cheers to you. What is it, gluten-free and keto-friendly, this mm-hmm. wine oh, is? That is a yeah, wonderful This is so LA. Cab locale. Yes, right? Yes. That's ah. a wonderful cab. Yes, and I like your wow. outfit. What, you know, what kind of animal am I? It's a, I think it's a dragon. You're like a monster. He's like a monster, kind of like um, a monster zinc monster, but not quite. I feel like every time I pull a hood off, I have to go, hey, that's me. <laughs> I think it's important you know? to do. It was always me. Oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <laughs> when I came over, I said, hey, you know, we kind of wear our pajamas on the show. Would you mind wearing this? I'm going to wear this one. He's like, sure. And I'm like, that's great. A player. That's he had the heater on it, too. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The temperature here in LA began with a six this morning, which is cold. Yeah. So I was like, you know, well, maybe I should put the heat on. I don't want my guests to be too cold here. Yeah. Thank you. Then you walked in and you're like, whoa, oh, it's hot in here. Oh my <laughs> God. Jeez. This is Jeez. LA. I'm turning 50. I'm going through this hormone change. <laughs> the hot flashes and I'm freezing all the time. <laughs> See, grown ass women talking nonsense. <laughs> 
Don't ask sweaty women. That's that's us. Don't ask sweaty <laughs> women for sure. Now, Mickey, I'm loving the headband. Tell us where you are, how you're doing, what you're wearing. Well, I'm in Bristol, Tennessee right now at a, at a lovely courtyard. I had some issues with my computer earlier, so I apologize about that. And um, I'm headed home for the, because, you know, we're, we're in the process of about trying to close on this house, so I'm super mm -hmm. stoked. But I'm coming home so I can, like, try to make sure all my stuff's wrapped up in Virginia. Well, you know, it's just been a process. Yeah. It's been a process, that but super is. stoked, but excited. Um, so, yeah, as far as what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a sweet T-shirt. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Tell your dog oh. I said hi. Oh. And my uh, thermal with no pockets. Oh, no, no pockets. No pockets. No pockets. Yeah. But you then I realized up. because you I told pockets. you I was, and I love pockets. I feel like pants, all pants should have pockets, really. It's really, because where do you put your stuff mm. if they don't have, if they you don't have pockets? Because there's always something you need to put in your pocket. Yeah, or for snacks. You know? <laughs> Little snacks. Like crystals, you know, just stuff, really. Secret. A shell. A seashell. Shell. <laughs> I'm just sorry, stuff. did you come with seashell pockets? No, oh, I'm sorry. You oh, what is that in your pocket? I don't know, a feather, some lint, <laughs> a seashell, and a crystal. A penny, and, and what penny. beverage, what libation do you have? Or do you? Um, I'm drinking a coffee them? because I still have to drive. Mm. A lovely hotel coffee because the Starbucks is closed downstairs because the courtyard, you know, if you're a courtyard connoisseur, you know that the, it's only open from, what is it, six in the morning until like a, it closes at 10? Oh. Isn't that weird, a weird time frame for them to, I, I, this is my thing with them, so I say that, but I do love their happy hour and their little bistro and stuff. So I do love it because you can get drinks and wine and stuff. I told you I was talking to Val on the way in. I was like, oh, I'm gonna buy some wine, but of course they wouldn't let me because it was, 3.30 in the morning, and you're not allowed to purchase the alcohol. After? At the time? hotel? After midnight. Even at the hotel. Is that weird? Are you in Utah? Hotel should be encouraging that. That's what I said. I said, okay, I get it why they wouldn't sell it to me in the gas station, right? Because I did, I did stop earlier on the drive and thought, thought I could buy it. I was in this time switch. It was like a joke, a running joke with Val and I because we were chatting last night on my drive, and it was like 11.50, and I was like, oh, I should stop before midnight just in case and then literally as i'm like looking at the exits the time switched over so it was then no. like 12 50. i said ah! no. <laughs> no what a rib what, a, what rib. a rib it wasn't meant to be so you know i'm drinking coffee i uh I, ha I had to use the utah thing there which by the way i'm a huge real housewives of salt lake city fan so i'm switching my opinions of utah for that reason but i said <laughs> utah because it was the only place where i remember being on house shows and the guys, the wrestlers, were so pissed off because there were there was nowhere to get alcohol, like at night, like you know, when they down at the hotel. They were pissed. Mm. Hot, yeah. hot, yeah, hot. I was thinking about opening the bottle of wine and then having a glass last night, and then I was like, oh, and then I'll have a little bit to sip on today, and then I couldn't commit to going to buy an next day because then I'm like, oh, I gotta hit the road later. No don't want to. Do but what I realized anyway, on my long ass tangent right there is I, all my like late packing, cause I procrastinated and waited to the late last minute. The only bra I packed is one black sports bra. So oh, literally so you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's, we got no. pink stripes on it. I need to see this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> got pink stripes on it. You can literally see it through my t-shirt. I said, oh, show, I put this? on the shirt. Well, I put it on cause I know we do this section and I put it on. I was like, oh, forget it. I won't wear the bra. I was like, nope. 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 Yeah. yeah. I love it. There's always a story to it. Oh, God. Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. Tree fell. Oh. Christmas oh. tree down. Tree down? Oh, no. You know, this is, this is BS because my husband told me that this tree looked like a toilet brush. I think it's adorable. It's beautiful. Why is Chris nodding? Wait, wait a minute. Hang on. There. It sparkles just like you and your I, eyes. I tried to wear pink and match it. Yeah. So you look so wearing. cute. Well, hey, uh, you know, we, we started this show, Chris, kind of doing like slumber party stuff. And usually I am in like a robe or something, but I'm kind of excited now to transition into some of my favorite waist up looks. And I wanted to wear pink to go with my tree that's very stable, P.S. Um, <laughs> I'm, drinking, <laughs> I'm drinking a lovely Slim Wine Rosé, which is again, Ooh. a nice healthy brand of wine, zero calories, zero sugar. And it says drinking wine, feeling fine. And I am. Yes. So there's Val, are we in your closet right now? Yeah. You're totally in my closet. <laughs> 
there's a lot going on. This is my favorite part of my house. I have a whole room dedicated to my clothing, my, you know, just my shoes, my jewelry, my gloves, my socks, my knee high socks, my, my tights, all that stuff. And it's my favorite <laughs> place in the house. And I just feel, I feel better being around all my stuff. <laughs> all my favorite stuff. All yes. my favorite things. Yes. Look at that closet. Like look, all those yeah. clothes. Lots of shoes, just keeps growing and growing, unfortunately. But hey, that's what yeah. I love. Makes me happy. But Chris, we want to give a little rundown. Now, everyone seems to uh, know wrestling that watches our show. Obviously, we're all wrestling fans and people in wrestling in the business, as you are. But give us a little rundown of how you got into wrestling and how your YouTube channel came to be. Oh, wow. So my first ever memory of wrestling was, so I was born in 1983. So I'm a kid of the 80s. And in the late 80s, we'd go to my grandparents' house and wrestling would just be on. Not because not my grandpa was like a huge wrestling fan, just they love sports. And when you grow up in Canada, if hockey's not on or baseball's not on, just put wrestling on. So that's when I was introduced to Macho Man and Hogan, Sergeant Slaughter. I remember Repo Man, Coco <laughs> Beware. That was my first ever like, Repo you know. Man. Repo Man. I loved Repo Man for some reason. <laughs> That was my first ever introduction to it, but I became a massive hardcore wrestling fan of the Attitude Era. So like yeah. 97, 98, Austin McMahon, that was the big storyline. And when I dive into something, I dive all the way in. I don't check the temperature of the water, I don't check the depth, I just dive all the way in. So mm -hmm. I went from watching zero hours of wrestling to watching literally everything, Raw and Nitro on Monday, Raw then repeated on Tuesday. I would watch Thunder and ECW and Heat and Shotgun oh, yeah. and Jacked and Metal. Velocity. Velocity. Oh, yeah. All of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched it <gasps> all. Dark matches. I don't Dark. know. <laughs> <laughs> then I, be I became a, uh, so I was wrestling for my high school team. And when you're a high school wrestler, they tell you that stuff on TV, pro wrestling, that stuff's fake. What we do in here, this stuff is real. And there's Rattling. like this really divide. Mm -hmm. But I started watching wrestling and then also doing amateur wrestling and I was trying to incorporate some of the moves into my matches realizing that most pro wrestling moves are like they're illegal in amateur wrestling right right yeah. most yeah. of them but then you do see some of those ones where they like get up yes. and like just completely like belly, know, to, belly back to back stuff duplex like that. Yeah. stuff yeah. over the thing I watched this one and who was it did Kurt it's ironic that they do that in school though I would think Chris because I think look at the crossover of the people who have come from wrestling background and how yeah. successful yeah. most a lot of a lot of the guys come from you know some sort of wrestling or some type of background like that but like the ones that have gone super far the gables the kurt angle obviously you know Sheldon, what i mean but Shel all had Sheldon, like, ben, yeah. shelton benjamin Shel yeah shelton the haas brothers yeah yeah that's yeah. amazing that, I, Brock I, Lesnar, I, yeah yeah I, I became a backyard wrestler uh I, and we and we had a, on your trampoline. You know I wish we had. It's not on your Wikipedia, Mister. Like, it better not be on my Wikipedia. I was a back. <laughs> We're gonna find it in my hometown, Pickering, Ontario. I was the. I'm a two-time HCW champion. Well, well, my well, back look at you. name was Chris Sharp because I was sharp talking, sharp walking, sharp dressing. Oh, I'm on you right now. <laughs> How many times are we gonna bring, bring him back? back? How many times did he go in the mirror and practice that promo, right? I still do, all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is alter ego. I, I wanted to be, so I wanted to be a pro wrestler. I wanted to do what you guys do. And I went to wrestling school. I went to wrestling school in Toronto wow. while I was in college. So- oh, I can, Who school did you go to? Do? do we know? I went to Squared Circle. And while I was there, um, Tracy Brooks was there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Was oh, there. Wow. Do you they, know they, like do you know Bert the Hurt and that whole crew? Like those guys? I don't I don't, I don't think so. Bert no, the like Hurt. Blue Edge and Tracy Bert the and all Hurt. What a Bert name. the Hurt. That's great. Isn't that, isn't that great. badass? Yeah. And there's a guy, uh, Rob Rob Frake Fuego, I Rob think. Rob Fuego, he was yes. the head trainer. Yes, yes. Yes. Small wow. world. Wow, Val. Look at Val. I know. Were you well, there yeah. as well? Tracy's a really good friend of mine, and, and I would do a lot of shows in, I would go into Toronto. I love, love, love Toronto. I would totally move there. Me too. Um, love but it. then yeah. we would go do shows up in Timmins, and Rob Fuego was there uh, with his his uh, little child would come. I don't know if boy or girl, but he would come and go to the shows. Tracy was there. I know that they all knew Edge. They knew, like, uh, so many different names of the Canadian wrestlers that were there. But then Bert the Hurt was the one that ran those shows up in Timmins, and they all seemed to know each other. So, yeah, what a name, uh, Bert the Hurt. Bert the Hurt. Did, did Gail Kim go there? 
Gail Kim went to Ron Hutchinson's school. That's right. Okay, okay. That was where Edge and Christian trained. Okay. Ah. okay. Ah. And fun fact, I was at Gail Kim's debut independent wrestling match when I was yeah. 16 years old. She wrestled wow. in a, ma a mask. Her name was La Felina. And we were in a bar called Cactus Pete's in Toronto, Ontario. Wow. Holy, yeah. I wish Gail could call in right now. That's I wish, <laughs> me too now. Well, I, when uh. I first interviewed Gail, I said, I want to get the camera rolling. And I said, what is your reaction if I say Cactus Pete's? And she's like, oh, no, I haven't heard that in 20 years. Oh my God. I do have the name La Felina. I think because I was such like a wrestling mark, especially for women's wrestling. Um, I think maybe in PWI or one of the magazines I saw her and they, they do a little background and they said that she was lawfully and had a picture of her in a mask, which was really funny because wow. I never thought of Gail being a masked wrestler. I mean, right. I she's gorge, right? Yeah, exactly. They always put masks on the good looking people. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's why. Let's cover up some of the other ones. Pentagon <laughs> he said, have you seen Pentagon? <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to think Mysterio, about Sting and Party. Cat. Sting and Jeff Hardy are very good looking men. I might've mentioned this 48 times. And they have been <laughs> face paint. What do, what do they think? All the time, which is amazing face paint, but yeah. Let us see you. It. I'm with you, I get it. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to good looking people wearing face paint for no damn reason. <laughs> yes. <Thank you. laughs> the things we cheers, Mickey. <laughs> What's cheers right in front of the mic here? Yay. Oh, that's that's cool. What a clink. That's like, what is it, ASMR or whatever that goes with? I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to clink again. <laughs> I know. Chris, your illustrious wrestling background is evident because behind you, you have a very, very piece of, uh, beautiful piece of show and tell. Uh, <laughs> I might have <laughs> it. it. I want to know where that's from. What is I am, uh, As you can see here, I am the Chris Van Vliet Show champion. Oh. The funny thing about making a belt is, um, you know, you didn't actually like do anything to get it other than like, you know. Make it, make it. pay for it, pay for yeah. it. <laughs> I feel well, like I designed I, it, you designed it, you picked the colors. This was designed for me. This was a- Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, Fandu Belts is the ones who make this and they make amazing uh, replica titles. It is a really nice one. Is it heavy? It is Can I feel heavy? Like a legit? Oh, dude, it's a, it is like legit. A Oh, no, I would hate to travel with that sucker. I, I love that we're talking about my belt and not the fact that there's four Emmys back here. Honestly, really? I, I, that's what I was going. I'm like, what are those four things back there? What is that? Well, Emmys? They, I thought they were Emmys? like, they had alcohol in it. <laughs> are they chocolate? No, those are real Emmys? Are they real ones? I thought they may have been yeah. glasses. I was like, are they martini glasses? What is bring going them. on? Let's bring them. Let's we'll bring them. We'll wrap an Emmy or two. Here, here it's just because we're marks and we love wrestling, Chris. That's why the I was drawn to the big old belt first. <gasps> what in the absolute amazingness is that? Can you tell us what they're for? Um, let's see. You have why to am I happy to see them? Read them. <laughs> I have to admit, though, I was nominated for a, my fifth Emmy last night and did not win. But what? Oh. For, for what? To be what nominated, though, how incredible is that? Oh my God! Oh, so you won so four. I didn't know that. Three, three for hosting and one for a sports story. I did. I'm actually really proud of the sports story. The Sun for the Sun in Canada. No, this was when I lived in Cleveland. Okay. Um, the sports story I did was about Gregory Iron, who's the only wrestler in the world who wrestles with cerebral palsy. Oh and wow! He, from Cleveland, I, and I was able to do this story with I him. I do remember Which him. Which one do we have here? You have I remember him. You have, there's the Greg Iron one. Yeah, there it is. Wow. I know Gregory Iron. I've re I've wrestled a show, The Wounded. For, uh, what is it? Uh, Warriors. Wounded Warriors. Wrestling for no wrestling for wrestling warriors or something. It's like a, it was the thing that they did that him and Zach. I guess they were partnered up, but it was like raising money for kids kind of thing. It was a guy oh, that Zach Gowan. Yeah, Zach Gowan. Yeah, Zach Gowan. But, but that's how I met Gregory Iron. So I have met him. I didn't realize that though. What a small world. That's crazy. That's great. Wow. Well, Chris, I know that, yeah. that, I mean, we knew that you were uh, amazing at what you do. I mean, you could tell that in, in three seconds from talking to you, but congratulations on that, on your success. That's, That's amazing. You should be so proud. We're very proud. Yeah. And, and today is the career highlight. It's all downhill uh, from here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After being on with the gorgeous ass women. That's oh, right. Hey, yes. We gotta change our name, guys. A little, little bit of a re We do have gorgeous asses, if I do say so myself. Hey. Okay. Main. You know, bean jelly bean. All um, them squats. I have to say, so for me, for me, it was uh, it's actually exciting because 
being on the side of, of wrestling that is, you know, interviews and, and commentary and this kind of stuff. Um, it was exciting for me to talk to you about like your interview process because watching your YouTube, which, oh my God, you guys, we're going to link everything in the description. Your YouTube channel is so freaking entertaining. You've interviewed everybody. I also saw something recently about you bungee jumping. You've got some cool stuff that's like reality that. television. Yeah. So we want to talk about all of that, but I have to say, having interviewed a bunch of people, can you tell us about um, your interview style, your interview process, and, you know, is interviewing wrestlers easier than interviewing people outside of wrestling? Oh, good question. So for me, I always wanted interviews to sound like a conversation. I was always drawn to the broadcasters that sounded like they were talking like, you know, like how we're talking right now, just, yeah. just right. at it. And I never right. liked the broadcasters that were like, tonight in the news, this is what's happening, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Because, right. But that's what so many hosts sound like. Yeah. And uh -huh. you know, growing up in Canada, there was someone I really looked up to named George Strombolopoulos who hosted a show called The Hour. And he was just so good at bringing people in and just having a chat with them. And I'm like, I want to one day be like that. So my whole process is like, I want to learn as much about the person that I'm interviewing as possible. Mm -hmm. I basically dump a whole bunch of notes out of my iPhone. I have so many notes about you. Oh boy. Yay! I'm his, I'm his yeah, guest on the my, next this show. This is my next guest, everyone, by the way. Well, of course, I've been a guest on your show. Yeah, that's going to be so fun. I'm excited for that because have you, have you been on his show before, Lisa? No, but remember, um, I was working at the restaurant. I was telling him when I got here, I was so upset. I quit my job because you guys did the interview <laughs> and I'm missing out. I'm like, um, it was I'm weird to not have you there. And I'm missing all these opportunities to be promoting our show. I was like, I'm quitting. I'm quitting. I'm done. If I can't be on um, Chris's show, I'm done. Done. Buka de Beppo, up your butt. Oh, I, love <laughs> Buka. Buka. I know, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Mm. I, they do. They, they do. really do. Yeah. Yeah, I was excited for that. Basically just, and stuff. I, I brain dump as much as I can, and I, then I listen to other interviews, and I want to know as much about them as possible. So if the conversation veers right, then I can veer right with that conversation. Yeah. It's just right. organic, right? You don't have like a set plan. We, we don't have a set plan normally yeah. on our show. We I just, think it's all about bullet points, and that's what I find so in talking to interviews. Be, interviews yeah. Because and I think you have that, to find your own style. Right. And I think that to answer the other part of your question, is it easier to interview wrestlers? Oh. Yeah. When you're a wrestling fan, absolutely. And I'm sure all three of you guys have gone into a news station where they're like, and uh, you are a WWE uh, superstar, uh, okay? Yeah. Right, and they, you know, and it's, that's a, I get it. I get that wrestling's not for everybody. If I had to interview a NASCAR driver right now, I, you know, it'd be a But you would interview. do your history, not right. like yeah. where, where we do interviews sometimes. Oh, are you the girl that holds the card of what round we're on yeah. on boxing? You're yeah. like, yeah. no, that's you, do mud, you do mud wrestling, you do pillow fighting. I'm like, no, Sometimes. you do not do, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, have you been in my apartment? Have you been watching me with my private time? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get my Patreon link? That's so weird. But it is true because people don't do their research. But like, like Chris said, I think that's what the balance is. Like doing your research, having some bullet points in case there's a lull in the conversation, but you don't want to sound like, so in 1998, you had this match. It's like, hey, you want to ask questions that are interesting. And with our show, we really try to do that where it's not just like, what is your favorite match? You know, it, it, we're so tired of that. And I think with your yeah, interview process, right. I see that it's so um, kind of behind the curtain, but it's fun. It's a different but I think there is a way to ask those questions in an interesting way. Instead of saying, what's your favorite match? Yeah. I'll ask someone, like, I, actually, I interviewed Kurt Angle earlier this year. And I said, look, you've had an amazing career. Unfortunately, a lot of people only know your WWE stuff. Mm -hmm. What's one impact match, one TNA match that someone needs to go back to watch to find out what you're really all about? And he's like, oh, wow. Like, and then he's like, oh, you need to watch this one, this one, this one. And he just went off on this great tangent. And I'm like, this is perfect. That's Instead cool. of just yeah. saying, Hey, what's your favorite match? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's most of our podcast. Like when we get interviewed by wrestling podcasts, very, the same questions over and over again. Just, and just, it's just like going, sure. Oh, did you not watch my last interview? I go, people already know this about me. You know, it's like, make it interesting, yeah. fun. Yeah. Right? For right, sure. guys? But another reason yeah. why I asked about interviewing wrestlers is because <laughs> to piss off so many people but hey we're here cheers uh, <laughs> and i had to interview people like from fight hey, TV. wait 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 don't forget to click the like button first yeah. before, <laughs> before, before you go mouth. before you go just subscribe do us a solid thanks um but like working with fight tv or like i've, I've interviewed for the darts and different things 
um, I noticed that like I'm, I was so spoiled interviewing wrestlers because they're just larger than life and they take over the conversation and they're like actors. And then bless their hearts, I went to, <laughs> like feel bad. I went to Vegas and uh, I interviewed some arm MMA. wrestling champions. Yeah, oh, and MMA. Wrestling. And they're, you know, so tell me about yourself. Well, what do you want to know? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh my Pulling God. teeth. But wrestlers, thank God, have that background of like, this is their time to shine and they yeah. give you something, right? Right. And I, I feel like, and you guys would know better than me, I feel like the whole thing about wrestling is you're always trying to put yourself over, right? right. And what, what better opportunity than an hour long interview where you can put yourself over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to make- the favorite subject of a wrestler is themselves. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, Lisa, what's your line you told us? You told us a funny line that was something like about me. Wait, no, oh. I, oh, enough about me. What do you think about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How have I never said I, This is my favorite. I learned from Rob um, Conway. Um, who's your favorite wrestler and why am I? <laughs> and why is, why is it me? That's amazing. <laughs> And now, Chris, I don't want you to name names or feel obligated to name names, but there does come a time where you're interviewing someone and you're not getting a lot from them or it goes totally awry or I've interviewed people where it's like they get a little defensive and it's like you're hitting a nerve. You don't have to name names, but have you had interviews like that and how did you handle it? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And if it's a, here's the thing. I think that these podcast style interviews are vastly different, right? We've got an hour. We got to get to know each other. This will kind of ride the ebbs and flows of an actual conversation. Mm -hmm. A lot of these celebrity interviews that I've done are four minutes long. And you got to get in the room, try to build this rapport really quick. Wow. They're also doing 40, 50 interviews a day. Mm -hmm. So sometimes right. you get in those situations and maybe the person that was in the room before you pissed them off, asked a bad question. And now you've got to ride that wave that has been created by somebody else. So hmm. I've ended interviews early. I've, <laughs> I, that's not a fun thing, but I've ended interviews early. I've also had situations where I'll just be like, actually, like, you know, they say something that I think is completely wrong. I'll be like, actually, here's the correct thing. Oh, they don't like to be corrected, huh? But like, you know, like I had someone who was like, well, this thing's never happened ever before. And I'm like, well, actually, what about this example and this example and this example? Well, I mean, yeah, but. Uh, oh, yeah. Since yeah. then, before that and after yeah. that, it would never <laughs> happen. <laughs> but I, I think the biggest thing is people get this complex that an interview is an interview. And, you know, you, when you, it, with a capital I, and when you use that term, we forget that this is just an interaction between people. Right. And if I were to run into any of you guys at a party tonight, I wouldn't go, okay, I need to ask this question and then follow by this question. And mm -hmm. you, know, you would just flow with the conversation. Yeah. Right. And I think the more that you do this and you guys know this, the more that you do this, the better you get at just going, okay, I was going to ask this next. I'm going to skip to question 14 next. And then we'll kind of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or you already asked, you asked something and then we're, we're such big talkers. I might like, just like talking about ourselves. We probably already answered the 10 questions you just wanted to ask. So you're like, Oh God, I don't know what to ask her now. You know what I mean? Right? <laughs> so what's your favorite color? Yeah. Red. And then my match, this match, like you know, <laughs> I wore red on this. And my, let's talk about my childhood. I'd like to talk about that for 20 minutes as well. Like I, I think our, uh, we were on a, um, a podcast, which shout out to, to Nate, uh, Nate, the great Lisa and Melina and I were on a podcast and bless his heart. Nate, is such a great interview. He's such a star, but we talk so much and we're such girly girls that we just went off. And he, I think he got two questions, two questions in it, maybe an hour. Yeah. <laughs> we were just chit chatting amongst ourselves. That's it. Because he was just know, there we were, yeah. in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Yeah. Oh, you're still here. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he kept on going like that. Right. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Let's well, talk about your fishing. Okay. You're, yeah. you're, he's a competitive bass fisherman, and you have yeah, won. Yeah, we were saying. Where are those you Grammys? You the bass. Where are, the, <laughs> where are those Grammys out there, bass fishing? Uh, the bassies. Well, that's going to be the top row. It's just going to be out him out there with a fly fish, you know? A golden <laughs> rod. That's how I, So I've been in fishing and bass tournaments since I was 14. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, and it's just been a huge passion of mine. Going back to the whole thing about, like, when I dive into something, I dive all the way in. Yeah, I've been fishing in bass tournaments, which is – a crazy thing to just say out loud, but it's your five biggest bass that you catch and then you bring them in at the end of the day and you weigh them. And sometimes these tournaments are two days long, three days long. 
And my That's passion awesome. of bass fishing led me to create a bass fishing company. So I have a bass fishing brand called wow. Tungsten. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Woo, tungsten. What's tungsten? Is That's that a, awesome. What, what does that mean? It's uh, tungsten is a type of metal. So it's, ah. it's you know, when you're fishing with like a plastic worm or a plastic like craw or something, that would normally float and you would sink it down to the bottom with a weight. And for years and years and years, it was lead, which is very bad for the environment. It's also like a big bulky weight. So tungsten is now the replacement for it. So this is I, just Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've heard people getting wedding rings in tungsten. Is that yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for promoting. Woo, yeah, no, it's, it's basically me bringing it <laughs> back the to jewelry. Sure. That's all it was. It's just me oh, talking. Here, let me, I'm going to get a few more um, for you girls. Take all his stickers. Yeah. Take all his merch. <laughs> want all the merch, Chris, please. Here's some of our, uh, these are some of our Ned Head weights. And anyone who's watching this that fishes for smallmouth or largemouth bass, okay. you know exactly what I'm That's talking cool. about. I prefer, Very cool. I prefer largemouth bass, personally, just in my yeah. experience. Uh huh. I don't like uh -huh. the small mouth. I need one for Val too. I need, I need three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Yeah. I like to catch them with a pretty big rod. You know. <laughs> it's all about the size of the rod. That's been my and the lure. It's all you gotta lure them in. Uh, I, I didn't think it was about the size. I thought how you work the rod. Yeah. <laughs> That's that could be it. We don't know. We're oh learning. my god. This is not PG thirteen, by the way. <laughs> Grown ass <laughs> women. This is. The Wait, we're gonna cut this out. Yeah, you're, you're now in it to win it. With Mickey, you said, um, oh, we're going to edit this out. And I remember Val kept it in on one of our shows. Do you remember that? I forgot what episode it is. I don't yeah. know. Woo -woo. Are you hot, Lisa? <laughs> these, dude, these onesies, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's a sauna, right? So God, sauna. I'm going to be super shredded under, 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 after I get this off. Like a sweat suit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Chris, you're a man of many talents. I had no idea about the bass fishing, but can you explain? I didn't really know that either. What the hell was going through your mind? I had sweaty palms watching your bungee jumping. What, 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 oh, why, oh. what, why? No, why? I do all why? that stuff. This is, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm all about, like, if something scares you, I think you should run towards the thing that scares you instead of sitting back and going, yeah, that thing's not for me. I think that you should at least try that thing to figure out if it's not for you, and then you can decide if it's not for you. I'm, so, af I'm afraid of heights, I don't know. Well, we should go bungee jumping then. I don't know, yeah. it's, uh, you know what? Let's that go. Bungee um, cord jumping, um, my old job, I used to remember corneas and eyes for transplantation, and they said bungee jumping caused um, uh, a little bit like deterioration on your corneas. So I'm like, I'm never gonna bungee oh, jump. Wow. That's my excuse anyways, I'm, I'm afraid of heights, but it is bad for your corneas, that's what they said, because that jarring, that, oh, that I don't seems know. like quite an excuse it's, to not go bungee jumping. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a lot of other things that are bad for your eyes, like, you know, going outside and looking. Yeah. At the sun, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've gone skydiving, bungee jumping, I've swam with alligators, swam with sharks, I've driven a tank, like this is the stuff I live for. And I think that I want to do, I want to do more of it. Al alligators too? Yeah, I swim with an alligator. That's yeah. a funny you phrase you just used. It's the stuff you live for because it's the stuff you could die for. Well, no, but, but, but here's a quote that I love. It's fear doesn't prevent you from dying. Fear prevents you from living. Yeah. That's a stick. Mm. That's a bumper sticker. Mm. Put that on. Yeah. Yes. yes. That, was, that was deep. Fear doesn't prevent you from dying. Fear prevents you from living. living. It's so true, though. Yeah, it is. right. Wow. It is. I am terrified. The closest I've gotten to bungee jumping is that thing at the park, you know, where they hoist you oh, up like a hundred and however cool. far, and then you do the big swing thing, and you have to pull the tab yourself. Like that's as close as I've got. I was terrified. I always think about like bungee jumping and then the bungee snaps, or like the I hit my head on the on the bridge or something. You see those fails. I'm not putting it out there. I'm so excited for you, but I get terrified when I but, think about that. Or like jumping out the plane and then my my cord, it's like cartoon. It just doesn't work. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's just. It's, yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, ah! Not the most fun I, I, well, how'd she go? Well, that cord just got stuck on there. There's footage of her going, ah, God damn it! I can't <laughs> even. <laughs> <Let me> go! <laughs> It'd be funny, but it'd be sad. And you know how they film, they film you going down, too? Yeah. They film you. you see oh, God, I'm face? so sorry. Oh, damn it. <laughs> it's terrifying. But, you know, that, it's, it's huge on YouTube, all of those sort of, like, death-defying acts. You know who does a lot of that? I'm not sure if he YouTubes it or not. Uh, you'll know him as well, Chris, is Justin Gabriel. He's like yeah. a base jumper or some crazy Yeah. Guy. TJ, yeah. 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 No way. I mean, uh, they, call him the, they call him the Darewolf. Like, that's not just his wrestling name. Like, he yeah. is. 
He's all about that he's stuff. Crazy. Yeah, he's serious. So are you doing that as a show too? Like a dare, uh, 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 kind of, or you just do that as part of your show when you do a, it, you just film it as extra content? That was a segment I was doing on the TV station I was at in Miami. And they basically mm -hmm. said, oh, we're looking for like a TV segment that'll like be once a week. And I said, yeah. well, here's my bucket list. Wow. And I handed it to my boss and they, my boss went, okay, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. And then every single that. week I got to do that. So Did now I've been putting it on my like YouTube. you greatly because he just wanted to see what you wouldn't do? I mean, was he like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Alligator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, those, okay, I have a fear like um, that's one of my... That's one of my bugaboos. Remember Step Brothers? One of my bugaboos. Bugaboo. No, no, okay. Um, Bug a bugaboo. It's, it's alligators. I used to live in Miami, and when I used to drive through the, the Everglades, I used to oh. like look in the ditch going, I would hate to um, run out of gas right now. I would hate because I'm, I'm deathly afraid of alligators. Well, they're not going to like chase you down and eat you, though. You know what? There was a movie. They could chase you, but you got a zigzag. Oh, yeah, yeah, I the zigzag part. <laughs> Again, if you died, your last footage would have be of you going, oh, oh, I'm not gonna get it, and then you die. <laughs> don't eat me, don't. That's the last foot. That's the last thing you're gonna freaking see is you going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they said they didn't zigzag. They're, they're not supposed to zigzag. <laughs> I, I pizza when I should have French fried. If anyone in the chat room right now gets that reference, you are amazing. <laughs> what is that from? Val <laughs> South Park. Oh God, I'm dying. Uh, like when you're learning to ski, which is actually one of my fears, one of my bugaboos, as you call it. Is they, what? Like, when you, you're French fry or you pizza. So like, you, he's like, oh, bro, you French fried when you should have pizza. Like, you're kind of like. <laughs> Do you remember the um, Faces of Death? Do you remember those movies? Of course. Yeah. That's where I got, remember that guy was fishing and he went over and the alligator, alligator took him over and started spinning Oh with God. Him. The gator roll. Yeah, the gator, gator roll. roll. That's how, cause that's what they do. Cause they're, yeah. yeah. To they drown, drown them. You. Gator roll. <laughs> Sounds delicious. I'm thinking sushi. We said it at the same time to drown you. <laughs> to drown you. Oh, God. And we're wearing the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> Have you oh. had gator before, Val? Yeah, I like it. I like gator too. In Nolens. And I got to tell you, pretty fantastic. Sorry. Gator's pretty, pretty great. great. Yeah. yeah. Me, you carry your crocodile handbag. Again, I apologize a little bit, but hey. Yeah. That's also me. But you did mention your, your bucket list, Chris. Is there anything that you want to tick off that you've not done yet? Like, what's in the future for you that you want to just terrify us all? Tell us when you do it so we can avoid the YouTube video and not freak out. <laughs> I can't. I can't. can't. Mm, this is a good question. So I, I want to go base jumping, although I know that that sounds absolutely terrifying. Or wingsuiting. What's well, wing I don't know what either of those are. Oh, yeah. it's like it's hooked up to your legs. Like it's, yeah, like yeah. A, it's a wingspan. You're like a, you. like a flying squirrel. Yeah, like you're like a legit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I also want to go to Antarctica. That is that is very high on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I do there, but yeah. just want to go there. Just hang mm -hmm. out. But yeah. face jumping is off buildings. Like you're jumping off buildings. Sure, or off cliffs. Yeah. No. With what on? What do you have on your on a your parachute? <laughs> a parachute, but <laughs> last minute, like yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but now I really want to see Mickey do something like that because I want to see the, the, we can put, cause <laughs> so we can put really funny music on it, like the Benny Hill theme, like, <laughs> it'd be hilarious. <laughs> This is this is your new thing, Mickey. You're going to, what's Mickey going to do next? And then you just mess it up every time. Me jumping Mickey, off of things. Did you, did you film yourself trampoline, um, jumping? The, the trampoline oh, park? park? Just like a little, no, somebody else said, I was, honestly, when I take Donovan to the trampoline park, I just don't stop running. Because we go back and forth from trampoline to the ball pit to the other big trampoline that you can apparently jump up on these high ledges, which I did, by the way. But no, I did not because I'm running after a six year old the whole time and then I'm blown up and exhausted by the time I get back. Getting blown up. Yeah. What do you call it? Momming so hard, right? You're I do mom so hard. <laughs> I love that hashtag. Well, Chris, please too. tell your fans uh, that are watching, and I'm sure they already know you, but uh, you might have some new fans in here, where we can find you. And of course, what's coming up next for you that we're excited about? Well, what's coming up next is an interview with uh, this one right here. Woo! So, yeah. And you, you can find wait. me online at Chris Van Vliet. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can search for me, Chris Van Vliet. And if you're subscribed to Ga, hopefully you can also subscribe to me as well. Yes. You're already there. We're Why already not? subscribed. Well, well, let's do a final cheers, Chris. Thank you so much. You're such a pro. We're we're such you're fans right. of yours. You so guys are the best. Thank you. Hey. You're cheers. always welcome back. Please come back. Wait, let's do. Oh, wait, wait. We have to do our gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. You got to do it. Oh, his is so angelic.
<laughs> I, <know. laughs> I love it so much. Well, as Chris said, please make sure you're subscribing to Chris's channel. Of course, all the links are in the description. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel as well, and we'll see you next week. The holidays are coming up and you guys are not going to want to miss what we have in store for patreon.com slash TV. And of course, for our show, it's going to be Christmas. It's going to be New Year's. We have outfits planned. Wait till you see. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for being here. Cheers. 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 Val just wants to take another drink. <laughs> Shots, anyone? This is the word. Go, yo, go. <laughs>